I'm Bridget A. from Drunk Dog Creative, and I'm here to demonstrate how to make part two in the Flip It One Sheet Wonder series. In this part, which is part two of four, there are five cards that you're going to get from one piece of six by six inch um, designer series paper, which is what Stampin' Up! calls our double-sided patterned paper, or DSP. Now, in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to make these, but cutting the pieces makes for a very tedious video. So I'm gonna fast forward that. I recommend you handle that in two ways. One, pause the video when it shows the pictures of the cut plans and take a screenshot and then cut according to the cut plan or go to drunkdogcreative.com and download them or print them out so that you have the cut plan. Um, I mainly wanna demonstrate the assembly um, and talk you through the cut plan. So let me talk you through this, this part two of this series. Part one I released a little while ago. What I'm doing is a four part series on one sheet wonders for six by six inch paper. And when you have all four parts, you can do this with a 12 inch by 12 inch to make, I think it's 18 cards. So some of the sets have five, some have four. This is part two. And I'm gonna show off one of our brand new colors, which is this beautiful summer splash. It's one of the 2024 to 2026 in colors with Stampin' Up. But I also wanna show you some variation before we get started. I've made two versions of this card so far. Um, and as you can see, I made them pretty much the same, but with different embossing. Sometimes I leave the cards blank without sentiments and I add that when I know who I'm gonna give it to. And so that's an option. So that's two different looks depending on the paper that you use. Um, same with this one, there's two different looks on card two. One, I embossed the background, one I left blank and used um, a sentiment from our Sweetly Scripted set, which is still available at Stampin' Up. So that's card two. Card three is still using those little squares, but this time I've made them diamonds. And you can see that I've made Let's see if I bring this here. You can see that on this one, I die cut a double layered sentiment um, from our stylish shapes dies. And then um, this one I've left blank because I'm waiting to see who it's going to go to and what I'm going to do with it. Um, card four is like little windows. So rectangles that make windows. And I've used um, two different sentiment shapes here. I've now smudge that one. Um, and you could leave it without a sentiment until you give it, or you can, you know, embellish it a different way. And then um, the final one is, uh, you can see here I've used the ribbon and the bow, but here I've left it blank. It gives it a different look. So your colors, your patterns, and what embellishments you use and what sentiments you use change it. So let's talk about the cards we're gonna make today. I've already showed you the Summer Splash. I've got a six by six inch piece of DSP and Summer Splash. For the metrics, I've actually cut this to 150 by 150 millimeters. You take about two millimeters off, but for the Imperial, it is six by six. Then I've got, I'm gonna just check the size on this, a piece of cardstock from the Summer Splash that's 195 millimeters wide and 150 millimeters tall, and that'll make the matting for that. Um, then besides that, you need your card bases and card fronts. So I've got um, five card bases cut from Summer Splash and scored along the fold line. And I've got five card fronts. Now three of them I've decided to emboss and two of them I've left plain because I'm gonna either stamp it or do something else with it. The embossing folder I've used is Painted Texture Embossing Folder from Stampin' Up. It's a 3D embossing folder. This one is still available. It hasn't been discontinued yet. Um, and I find with the Stampin' Up embossing folders, so I've used some other brands that are 3D, and they recommend that you wet the paper and pass it through your machine three times. Um, I find with the Stampin' Up ones, I don't have to do that at all. I don't have to wet it. I only have to pass it through once. And as you can see, I hope you can see that, I get really strong, beautifully textured 3Ds. Um, I'm also gonna use some of the Summer Splash ribbon and the Summer Splash ink pad with the Sweetly Scripted Sentiments. I love these. These are just brilliant for adding something simple and elegant that's still a little fun. Anyway. 
anyways, um, all of the cut sizes should have shown up on screen, but also will be on the blog at drunkdogcreative.com. On the blog are some really um, comprehensive instructions as well. And this video will be linked onto the blog too. I'm gonna take out my paper trimmer from Stampin' Up. It's got this great swing out arm. It's got a scoring blade and a cutting blade. And I am going to, I have printed out my cut file. So this is for the DSP. This is for the cardstock matting. Again, these graphics are on the blog, but um, also hopefully you paused the video and took a screenshot if you don't wanna print it out from the blog or look at it on the screen. So you can cut this any way you want, um, as long as you end up with all of these pieces. And um, the little red areas are areas that are gonna be discarded and not used. So I try to minimize that. Um, the only tricky cut on this one is this diagonal, and I'll slow the video down and show you how I do that. So let's start cutting. Um, also, final tip, if your paper is directional, think about, on both sides, think about um, what order you wanna put your paper in so that it shows up. Now I'm lucky this one can go any way and that makes it a lot easier. Um, but anyways, let's start cutting and I'll come back to you in a minute. All right, this is where I'm gonna cut card A, which has, as you can see here, this double triangle that you want to cut. Now, this paper trimmer makes this easy. I just line up one point in the track and swivel the other point so that they are both in that track. And that is two perfect diagonals cut easily. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is cut one of these in half, but I have to decide um, which pattern I want to be my bottom and which the top because the bottom one is the one that gets cut in half. So do I want the stripe on top and the floral underneath, or do I want to do it floral on top with stripes underneath? And I think I like it the other way. Um, so I want the floral uh, on the bottom, which means I'm going to have to cut the floral in half. And again, all I do is put this bottom right on one of the, the horizontal lines on the trimmer. I really hope you can see that. And the point right in this groove here, this brown groove. And if I have that bottom lined up squarely along that line and that point right in the track, so you just gotta wiggle it a bit, and then just close the gate, hold it, and straight through, and then I've got my two bottom pieces. So I'll put those aside. I usually stack them kind of in the order I'm going to use them so that I keep all the card pieces together. Um, so I'll just put that out of the way a little bit. All right, so there are all of my DSP pieces for cards one, two, three, four, five. So it's now time to cut the card stock. So what I have is a piece of card stock that's 195 wide by 150 tall, and I'm gonna cut it to this cut plan. Now you'll notice A is different to A, and that's because, I can find where I put it again, um, it's going to look like an envelope. So the cardstock matting needs to be um, one piece instead of three. That's very simple. Um, and they're not in the same order because I'm trying to maximize how much you get out of the smallest piece of cardstock possible to preserve the cardstock. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this up according to this plan. There's your pieces cut. 
So once they're all cut, that's kind of the hard work done. All that's left is to paste them together and assemble the card, which is what I'm going to demonstrate now. All right, so the next step is fixing all the pieces together that you've cut. Um, I really like the Stampin' Up liquid glue. It's got a thin nozzle at one end and a broader spreader nozzle at the other end. Um, and I don't just like it because I get a good discount on it. So that's why I joined Stampin' Up to begin with, was to become uh, what, what we kind of colloquially call a hobby demo. I didn't intend this as a business. I just wanted the personal discount. Uh, still don't really run it as a business. I do tutorials because I'm a professor for my day job. I love to teach. Um, I didn't, I don't intend to make money out of this, but I did pick up a few customers and you're welcome to buy from me. I do donate most of the profits to Docs and Rescue Australia. And if you've watched my videos, you know that um, you can often hear my toxins barking in the background. So that's an organization I've been with for a long time. Anyway, I'm running out of this pad, so I am going to glue things on a silicon mat, which you can see is well loved and well used. Um, you can just tear the grid paper off, but I like it and I'm running out of it. So here we go. I've got my wet wipe nearby for both the mat and my hands. Make sure that you know which side you want facing where and that you glue the back, not the front, because we're going to flip these and, and use both sides. All right, so the first bit, I'm just going to spread that a little more evenly. This center, I want to align this so that there's just a couple of millimeters edge there. And hopefully that will give me an even border all the way around. You can use the grid paper, um, which I can still see through my silicone mat to help you with this alignment. Um, it's not a bad idea to do that. Just squeeze a little and use the spreader to spread it all around. And then once that first one is down, the rest of this is easy because you just line it up to that. I also use the silicone mat um, when I'm doing a lot of gluing like I am now so that my if I do it on the paper and I don't wipe it off in between, um, my backings can get stuck to it because I may not see where it is. And I don't want that to happen right now. So that's the piece for um, card A done. Card B are these pieces. So the idea with the flip it is that you flip it and you reverse and you, you can pick the best um, of each side. I like more flowers for that one and the stripes on the other one. Um, and you use both sides of the paper to make these cards. That's why it's called Flip It. Now all my pieces have been cut and glued together, it's time to assemble the cards. All right, I'm going to start with card A, which is this one. So I'm going to take one of the embossed uh, card fronts and a card base. And I'm going to put some of these out of the way now that they're drying so they won't stick together. Um, and because I'm going to use ribbon on this, um, I'm going to do the ribbon before I put the card base on. I'm going to grab a piece of the ribbon and just cut it so that it slightly overlaps each end. I'm going to take my stamp and seal, which is my tape runner, and just through the middle put a couple of little dots to just kind of hold it in place for now. Um, they can always be removed by rubbing over the glue eraser later. And I'm gonna put a little bit 
across the back. Yeah, I'm almost out. This might take a minute. Put a little bit across the back and tuck that over and stick it down on that piece. So that's why you do your ribbon before you do your card front. And then I'm of course gonna go around the edges with my stamp and seal. Again, you can use glue for this too. I just really like using this. And because these edges fray, I'm just gonna go over the ribbon's edge a little to catch those fraying bits. I'm gonna make sure my card is facing the right way because this is a horizontal card and I'm gonna align up my card front to the card base, just like that. And then I'm gonna take my stamp and seal. Yeah, I'm running out. And I'm going to affix my design to the front of the card right over, sorry, shouldn't be moving all that, right over the ribbon so that it looks like a little envelope on the card. There we go. And then I'm gonna take a little bow that I tied um, earlier using my Zutter bow at all. I've got a video somewhere about how to use that because before that I could never ever do bows. I'm gonna take my, um, take your pick and my mini glue dots. I absolutely love these for ribbons. And I'm gonna pick one of the glue dots off there and I'm gonna put it right on the knot at the back of the ribbon. If I really wanna make sure it stays, I'm a little bit overkill with adhesives. So I sometimes also put a dot on each of the hanging tags, the hanging bits of the ribbon, um, just to make sure the whole thing stays really well glued down. Again, I'm a little bit overkill on adhesives, so you don't have to do that. But I'm just gonna position my little tiny ribbon wherever I want it and put it there and I can add a sentiment to this side if I want, or to the inside, or I can grab um, some of the embellishments. These are the 2024-2026 In Color Shimmer Gems. So I'll leave that on the white so you can see it. They're shimmer gems in each of the new colors that match, so you could use them around there or on the other cards. I'm not going to at the moment. But there's card A made. Then card B is another ribbon card. So I'm getting those out of the way first. Um, so I'm gonna grab again an embossed front and the card base. And I'm gonna put a tiny bit of stamp and seal just right through the middle there and place some ribbon on it with some overhang, little bit of overhang at each side. And then tuck it around the back. You can, if you overlap too much, you can trim it or you can just go over it with your stamp and seal to make sure it doesn't fray. And I'm gonna put that on my card front. And you can decorate the whole front and then put it on. It doesn't matter what order, you do whatever order you're most comfortable with for that part. Um, this one is a vertical card. So I'm just gonna line this up as evenly as I can. Then I'm gonna take these two bigger pieces and decide you know, which way around do I want them. Do I want that way or this way? I might do it that way to start with. There's a reason for that, I'll show you later. So again, just get my stamp and seal on this. And kind of evenly space it. above and below the ribbon, which is a little bit crooked. Just move it a tiny bit. All right, and then I find my other bow I've made and get out my glue dots. So you can leave these plain. You don't have to use the ribbon. You don't have to use bows. You can embellish these any way you want. I'm just showing you a few different ideas to help. I'll just use one for now. Put that little one in the middle. Now. By putting the more plain, I think more plain bit up the top, I leave room to put a little sentiment in the middle of that um, if I want to later. So that's card B. 
Um, card C is the three little squares. And unlike part one, where we put them vertically, these are going to be a diamond. So we're gonna create a little card with a diamond motif. And this is also going to have a ribbon because I really like the ribbons. So I am first going to kind of place these um, where I want them. And I've already decided which one is stripes and which one is. And this is where if you have a one, a pattern that only goes in one direction, you need to be careful how you cut it and take a little more care. Um, I think even with the stripes, to me, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of ribbon that will overhang a little. I'm going to throw a toy for a dachshund. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of stamp and seal kind of right where those points line up to make sure I get this as even as possible with my pad. This is where using the grid also helps. I'm gonna align that ribbon to the last um, set of squares. Any excess tape can be rubbed off later. Or now. Okay, so there's my ribbon. Um, my, my take your pick is my favorite tool. It's got a double sided, you can see how used it is. There's a blade and uh, a point. There's the pickup putty for embellishments. It also comes with the double ended stylus and you can buy a whole bunch of accessory packs of different ends for it. It's very cool. Now when I'm doing the diamonds, I am going to um, do the middle one first because once that's lined up appropriately, the rest are easy to place. So I'm gonna to try to find, and you just align the points to the middle of the ribbon or to a line on, on that, whatever you prefer. That's about midpoint. So I'm gonna put that down and then do the other two. And you're deciding which one you want to go top and which bottom. So I line these up so that either the points are touching or slightly overlapping. I think just a tiny overlap gives it a kind of slightly more interesting look, but that again is up to you. Again, the other lines up to the middle of the ribbon. So then I have my three diamonds, put the glue there, and then I can just, okay, I'm out. Give me a second while I change that. All right, um, so I'm out of tape. I'm gonna uh, change the refill, which I'm gonna show you on camera is super easy. Sorry, um, you just pop that out and uh, it's sticking to my fingers. And you line up um, these spaces with the two, uh, two prongs in there and pop the front back on and that's it, you're refilled. So I'm gonna just uh, put this on. My card base. Again, you don't have to use ribbons. Um, I just like them. <laughs> okay, so there's card C done, two to go. Card D is where you make kind of a window effect. And this is where I'm going to use a plain card front um, with the card base. And I'm actually going to um, stamp a sentiment at the bottom of this one. I'm gonna pick a sentiment from Sweetly Scripted and use my long block. Um, I'm going to use a million thanks. The great thing about the Sweetly Scripted is you can go off the card with it. Um, there's no problem doing that. 
Uh, you just have to, now you can put your um, papers on it first and then stamp it um, or just kind of line them up where you think you want them. so that you have an idea of where to put your sentiment or your stamp. Again, you don't have to use a sentiment. You can do just about anything. And you can have these in the middle or up a little bit. So because I'm gonna put a sentiment on, I'll put them a little up toward the top. You can position them anywhere. Put them just a little more, just so I have an idea. Um, but sometimes you might wanna not leave them on the card because, um, it may interfere with the stamping, but that at least gives me an idea of where I want the sentiment. Then I'm gonna take my shy, uh, my Summer Splash uh, stamp ink pad and just tap this onto it to get that inked up and center it about there and a light press and it's done. And you can see it goes onto my pad and that's not a problem at all. I'm just gonna Give that a wipe, I'll clean it later. So that is your sentiment. Um, this stamp pad actually looks a tiny bit juicy as I stamp it because it's brand new. So I do have a quick video about how to do this. But I'm gonna show you right now what I do when it's a little bit juicy. I take a plastic spatula, you can use a credit card as long as it's one you're not needing, and I just rub the ink a little bit, push it gently down into the pad, and it just distributes it more evenly. Not a lot comes off, and it just helps it stamp cleanly. One thing about stamping up is you get value for money. The pads come to you pretty juicy. Um, they, they give you a decent amount of ink, so sometimes you need to just adjust it that way. I'm gonna close it up till I need it again. I'm still happy with how that's stamped. It's, it's pr still pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna put this, oh, I knew I was gonna do that. All right. All right, so I've smudged it. Um, not a lot I can do about that. Um, normally what I would do is, is flip it over and, well, yeah, okay, let's flip it over and redo it. Let's see how, if the stamp pad is any better. I still sort of know where I want that, so I don't need to reposition again. I'm just going to lightly tap. All right, and I want it about there. Quick stamp. It's a bit better. I did stuff it a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about that for the demo. That's what you get when you rush. You press too hard um, and that's what causes that. I'm not gonna worry about it for now. I can um, redo this front later. But in order to get on with the video, we're just gonna um, pretend that didn't happen either, either way. This is also why I keep a chuck swipe or a wet wipe with me to wipe my hands when I'm stamping, because a number of times I've smudged the white cardstock after stamping. Okay, so that part's done. Um, and again, I'm gonna start with the first one and just put all four of these in place. I'm gonna start with two just to get the spacing like that. And what you want is you want each of these um, with a little gap between them. And as even as, as straight as possible. Once you have one down, it's easier to get the rest going. Sorry about Hugo, my dog. 
dog. He really wants to play. glue off. Get it off my fingers. So that's your fourth card done. Again, you can do it um, with an embossed background, more centered with a sentiment at the bottom. Um, I might put a couple little gems there actually to uh, just sparkle it off. Or, oh, here, there. So you can see my putty tip and you can get replacement putty too. So I'm just going to Sometimes less is more. Um, I don't always know where that line is because I like more is more sometimes. But I think those three little dots under the sentiment, if I hadn't smudged it, would be just perfect. I'll put the cap back on. Um, so that's that card done a slightly different way. One to go. So one card left to go. It's the one with the three strips across. I've embossed the previous two. I've done it with ribbon, without ribbon. This time I'm doing it plain um, with the three strips without ribbon. Um, and just because, for no other reason than to try something different. I can add a sentiment later to it um, when I know who the card is going to and what I'm using it for. So I keep a stash of made cards that are relatively blank and then I just create the sentiment or the embellishment that suits the person when I'm ready. So these three go straight across, kind of centered. I'm gonna do the middle one first because again, once that's in place, it's easy to line up the other two. And it's also helpful to use a grid pad for this. That's roughly centered. Okay, so the middle one's done. Then you can do the top and bottom ones. And as long as you space them evenly apart, it can be as wide spaced or narrow spaced as you want. This stuff is very sticky. So that's just very simple compared to the other two, which have more going on with them. I do like the embossed background with this but I also wanted to see what it was like without. Um, now I can do like a, another rectangle with a sentiment that goes through the middle, or I can use some of those jewels scattered through it or any sort of thing. So that's the fifth card. So there's your five cards. Let's put them out. They need their sentiments added if you want. I mean, the other way to do sentiments, of course, is to stamp them inside. Now for the inside, which I haven't done, I usually cut a piece of cardstock that is um, 138 millimeters wide by 95 millimeters tall in white or whatever this front is and put it in there to write on. Um, because if you have a heavy front and a very light back, um, the card doesn't stand up well. So sometimes having the cardstock inside, if you don't want to write on the green, is a really good idea to balance the front and the back. Um, so that's the basic idea. Uh, I've showed you the other cards and there'll be pictures of them on the blog so you can see how to cut a sentiment here. These are my current go-to um, dies for sentiments. This is the Stylish Shapes die. I think I may have given the wrong name for the die cut earlier. This is the Stylish Shapes set and there are so many cool things you can do with this. You can see that even a round one across those would look really good um, or a smaller one across those could be done. Like there's all sorts you can do. That's Stylish Shapes die. Um, this one is the Nested Essentials die. So that's what I did the other die cut that I showed you earlier on. Oh, let me just get this out. So this is Nested Essentials. 
and this is what did this. This was two of these um, with a stamp in the middle. The, these two are my absolute go-to die stamps, uh, die cutting for embellishments or even for designs like cutouts because they're all nested. They're really cool, funky shapes. If you get nothing else in dies, these are invaluable for sentiments and card decoration. The other thing that works very well are the punches, the pick-a-label punches at Stampin' Up, where you can make something anywhere from half inch to one inch wide, and you can make the ends differently with them. I use those in other videos, but this is the Unbounded Love dies, and this is brand new with the Unbounded Love um, stamp set, and these make really interesting dies that are kind of um, old world, um, that are, you know, um, like floral, that are really cool shapes for different things. I cut a couple out, you can see, um, when I was playing with the, um, that's the Shy Shamrock paper. So even something like that, had it actually matched, goes well. Um, this one I just did in white to play with it. It's got both an outside ring and an inside piece, and they're separate. So you could do it out of two different colors, and then um, have like the inside white and then the outside in a color and put them down or use them together the same as they are now. That should give you an idea or even, you know, something like that. So these, these are kind of cool dies. This is new. This is the Unbounded Love series of dies. Let me see if I can find the, yeah. um, and these are the stamps that go with them. So very cool sentiment stamps that have so much to it. Highly recommend this set, highly recommend it. Um, but my go-tos are the stylish shapes and the nested essentials. These are great. Anyways, talking done. Um, that'll give you an idea of the Flip It uh, One Sheet Wonder. And that's part two done. Thank you for watching. I can't wait to see what you make. Follow me on socials. Um, and the Drunk Dog Creative Facebook page also has a group called the Makers Gallery where you can post photos of the stuff that you've done because I'd love to see them. Thanks for everything. Um, don't forget the blog has complete instructions, including metric and imperial cut files. Have a great day.